Hi, I'm Marley, and I am one of the co-facilitators for the Lakeland Correctional Facility Creative Writing Workshop. One of my favorite parts of um, facilitating, facilitating this workshop this past semester was when participants would take one of the creative writing prompts in a totally different direction than the way I had envisioned it. It was really creativity at its max, um, and I knew that whoever was writing the prompts um, was super passionate about what they had chosen to write about. Uh, my name is Betsy. Um, uh, one of my favorite parts about uh, facilitating uh, the Lakeland workshop was uh, I feel like in the uh, exchange just by writing instead of like meeting people in person, I hear a lot more about um, their daily lives inside um, and it offered a very a lot of uh, really interesting uh, uh, looks into their lives like we have guys who um train greyhounds um and uh design uh clothing to to candles and uh i feel like a lot of times when you see them in person and you um focus a lot on what's going on in the class you end up with a little bit less time hearing about all these other other very awesome sides um to our our participants i'm devin i'm the third co-facilitator and my favorite part of the workshop was pretty similar to Betsy, just hearing about the daily occurrences inside and how they were able to translate the things that happened to them into creative expression using their words as an outlet. I thought it was very powerful and a way to hear about what's going on for them in a different way than might be portrayed otherwise, like in the media. And so without further ado, we will read um the final project that LCF created, which is called Happenings on Lakeland Street. First, the buildings on Lakeland Street. There is a building on Lakeland Street made of material somewhat discreet. In this cold rainy weather, its appearance matches a duck with one wet feather. No one quite recalls what this building used to be. They just look at it and say, oh gee, having no idea of its history. Today, this building is functionless, an empty husk and day. This building on Lakeland Street, quite discreet, wet and bedraggled with a forgotten history today. The name in the marquee says Open Door Theater. The building is recessed off Lakeland Street behind a fair-sized parking lot. The theater itself is an historical refurbished building that was built during a period when opulence and majestic design was in vogue. Its function is multi-purpose. It is the one place on Lakeland Street you can see a Broadway musical, a play, and a concert in the same week. On a quiet night, it will feature a recently released movie, Open Door and Local Vernacular, is one of the mo more popular spots on Lakeland Street. The buildings on Lakeland Street are remnants of the past. The entire complex used to be a state home for children. My stepfather retired back in the 80s before it was converted into a prison. The building I'm describing comes from his tales of horrific things that went on in his unit. The history of this building is haunted by the many children who suffered through abuse, neglect, and mistreatment, even death. Even now, some materials that make up this building are sought after and feared. The copper siding is worth money. Some old bricks and blocks are refurbished, but the black mold and other materials such as paint with lead and ceiling filler remain. But everything else has stood the test of time. This building functions as it did so many years ago. It houses 79 men now. Many wonder why so much of the fixtures are so low to the ground. The rain sometimes makes it through. The sun heats the building up and the wind blows right through. Many games are played here, even though now it's full of men. The Recreational Center building on Lakeland Street is made of concrete bricks, breaks. Due to the COVID-19 virus, the rec center is closed. When it was open, people would gather together to have all types of sporting events. There would be pool tables, ping pong tables, and shuffleboard games being played. The rec center has been on Lakeland Street since the 1900s. The rec center is also known for having many political speakers and different kinds of spiritual meetings. Lakeland Street has changed in many ways since the rec center closed. 
When the COVID-19 shutdown is lifted, the doors of the rec center will open again. A place full of spirits, but not the kind you think. Not the ones that haunt, but the ones that you drink. This place is old fashioned. It was built brick by brick. The side alley is where all our patrons get sick. 5610 Lakeland Street is an old house built in the 1940s of wood. Over the years, the house has been repaired several times, making it look newer. However, wooden houses don't last long when you consider all the bad weather that houses undertake. Of course, families have always lived in this house until the last few years when weather really started to take its toll. So the house on Lakeland Street has recently been abandoned. No windows, the plumbing is gone, the wood is rolling the entire house away. Young kids come by and throw stones at the empty house because it's supposedly haunted. 5610 Lakeland Street. And now we will describe creative writing that was written in response to a prompt uh, described Lakeland Street through the eyes of a mailman. It's 10 o'clock in the morning and Postman Jones is making his usual rounds on Lakeland Street. He always stops and chats with the friendly people on Lakeland Street. Miss Robertson, I have a letter for you from your daughter in Detroit. I hear she is studying to be a teacher. Congratulations to her. As he strolls down the sidewalk, he encounters Mr. Johnson, a retired police officer of 30 years. Good morning, he says. I have your recent income tax check that you've been waiting on. And Mrs. Brown is cleaning her front yard as Postman Jones hands her a letter from her son who is currently incarcerated for child support. Bobby holds on to his pit bull dog who regularly chases Postman Jones when he passes the mail on their block. Hold him tight, Bobby, the postman says. I am almost through passing the mail. Old Lady Huston waits eagerly for a letter from her grandson who is in the army. Every day is a busy day for Postman Jones. Yeah, he loves his work and the people he delivers mail to. I am Pete the mailman on Lakeland Street. I make my mail drop offs at 2 p.m. When I come on the block, almost all the people, 98% of them, wear blue and orange clothing and the air smells like pure nature, pollution free. The sound of seagulls gawking in the air. I am a security guard in the gated community. Not only do I deliver mail, I make sure everyone is safe. I socialize casually with the resident of Lakeland Street. Many of them try to avoid interaction with me because I have a taser and a flashlight. Some people fear my badge, others respect it. But when I am delivering the mail, that's all that seems to matter to the people on Lakeland Street. This place sure is deserted. Ever since COVID and social distancing, I just don't get interaction like before. I can remember a time when I would be walking down Lakeland Street and I would see men playing sports, working out, and even playing card games on the outside tables. Now it feels like a ghost town, and it is. The mask I wear makes me feel like more of a stranger than I am. Nobody can see my smiles and I can't see their smile. This pandemic has given us mailmen a bad name. Obviously, things are slower. This is because of reasons outside of my control. Yet, I take so much shit from people who are waiting on a letter, some orders, or even the check from the IRS. Lately, that has been a thorn in my side. Some got it, others didn't. The men who didn't look for me every day. There is nothing more I would like than to deliver this check to them. I've been on the job for several years. Many remember me because of the way I sing songs and making my deliveries. Soon, it'll be Christmas, and I would hope everyone is in the mood when I come through singing carols. It would break my heart if the pain of these circumstances took away the joy of Christmas. It's bad enough we can't be with our loved ones, but we still must be thankful, helpful, and considerate of others. Man, oh man, the grizzled old mailman mumbled under his breath as he pulled into the reception area of the huge concrete processing plant on Lakeland Street. He got the shivers from the place. Scott, 921 base, are you en route yet? The office. The old mailman picked up his walkie. Yes, I'm almost done. I only have the plant left. Sucks to be you. That place is wrong. Out, the mailman said, his nerves on end. He'd heard from the grapevine that the plant had gone from state run to federally run. Hundreds of vans and trucks came and went. 
Even the postal service had to submit worker bios to the place for some reason. He pulled up to the side doors and made his way to the mail truck's back doors. Been doing this too long, he muttered as, as his bones creaked and popped. He thought of his upcoming retirement and the beach he'd be on with his pension. He was under the old contract, so he'd be pulling in a nice sum. The side door of the plant opened as he approached. Mr. Johnson, a couple of guys asked. They had on aprons. Um, yes? We've been waiting on you. We hear you're about to retire? Why, yes, I am. Well, step in. We have a party for you, they said over the noise of the grinders. Okay. And that is the last one. Um, thank you all for your hard work this, and creativity this past semester. It was really a joy to work with you.